Hello friends, we're back from Florida and we're back in the garage as you can see and today we're going to try a very intriguing project. We're going to create a trivet or what we're going to build we're going to use as a trivet using corks and very basic uh, pieces of wood but it can also be used as a piece of art and in the process you're going to see how you can make a frame for a picture or whatever you want else you want to frame. Well, we give dimensions in this film, the dimensions are not critical because they will depend on your specific project. I hope you enjoy today's project. As you cut the corks, if you're using a bandsaw like we do, you will have the tendency to pull the corks down and the tendency to get caught here in the edge. So get in the habit of, of lifting it a little bit as you cut it. Let me show you. See it caught there and it's caught. Avoid having to stop the process. So let me show you one with the adjusted method. So as you go in, just lift it a little bit, it doesn't have to be huge. That's good. So you've decided to lay your pattern out as a basket weave uh, with the corks that have been cut in half. And now you're getting them laid out um, so that the pattern is nice, something that you are enjoying. And so we make sure that we have enough for the size that we have chosen for the bait rivet. We set the pattern the way that we wanted it and then we simply mark the dimension so we know how to cut the wood. Keep in mind this will have to be the internal dimension. We're going to make a mitre frame so this has to be the short side of the mitre. In our case we were going for a square and we ended up with, with a square so we are going to simply have to transfer this dimension to our mitre to the wood. Okay. okay. So we have set the miter saw onto the 45 degree mark here, but to ensure that we're actually at 45 degrees, we've used the uh, angle here, the square, square, to show, and it is. If you could shine the light around just a little bit, um, it's flush against the back here and flush against the blade, so we are at 45. We need to turn it, right? Mm -hmm. Hold on, I need to move. I know. Okay. 
It's hard to... I need the square. So when you have a small piece of wood, it could be hard to line up your line that you mark it with uh, in order to ensure that you're at the 45. So what he has done is used the square to help him line the blade up appropriately. So now we have a piece that is. Does that look good? Yeah, that should just work. Okay, I'll take the other dimension too, just to fit. No, the same piece. Huh? Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to use this to cut the other four. So now that we've uh, ensured that the piece is the correct length for both sides of the trivet, um, we're going to use that as the template to cut the remaining three pieces. Push it a little bit. Oops. That's all right. That's okay. Let, let me let me put it there. Yeah, here, so I blow yeah. this off. Yeah. Turn it over. Just again, like always, make sure that this is flat. And you do flip the main piece over to match up those angles uh, since you're only cutting one angle and not constantly flipping your saw back and forth. Can you pull a little bit? Pull. Push a little bit. Push a little more. Make sure they're even again. I will. Well, I'm a tiny bit now. Okay, hold on. Don't move it if you can. Is that flash there? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, push it over. Push it a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, good. Plus? Mm -hmm. Alright. Yeah, and I think that'll be okay because I think uh, they're popping up now, there's nothing to hold them down, but as we put them into the frame, mm -hmm. they'll stay in and they'll be tight. And that way they don't come out, you know, later when you're mm -hmm. using them, right? Alright, okay. mm -hmm. So now we are starting to assemble the frame, uh, putting some glue onto the mitered edges. this to make sure that we have a uh, okay. I 
don't look like he took much, did it? No. I think we need longer, what do you think? Yeah, go ahead and get a longer one. In. If you're going straight in, longer is better. That should be... Okay. Is it? I think so. Okay, so we need to do that in all four. Use a piece of uh, spare wood to make sure that your angle remains unmoved while you're brad nailing it. And we're using clearly brad nails to do this. Move it around. the edge. It's too close. Is it good? I think so. Okay. So turn it over, upside down, and let's do the last one. Do the hokey pokey. Turn it all around. Well, and put it on both sides. Do both sides on that one. Yeah. And again, the brads here operate like a clamp. The the structural strength is going to happen from the glue. Okay, Hold on. Let me get it lined up. We'll get it in just this a second. One. We'll get it in just a second. So we are going to wipe the excess glue by getting that last brad nail in place. Lost her right up there. There's That's some good. right here. Right here. Okay. And then here. And there's some right on the here. table there that, that you're getting. Is there a face better than another? Yeah, I kind of like this one. Huh? I kind of like this. Do you want to use my good? You used it for we a... We had a smaller piece, I think, somewhere. Where did I see it? So we're using a quarter inch uh, finished plywood as the backing for it. And what we're doing is using the frame itself uh, it's not perfect. to scribe a template. might not have a perfect corner actually. Well, Should we try different there's corners? different corners. You can try different corners. It doesn't mean that the corner is perfect in the Yeah, this one's much better. Okay.
No, it's going on the other side. I'm just checking. Do we need to save any or? Checking for fit. Okay, let's glue. What are you doing now? Raising that just on there. Oh, hold on, this is the good side or the bad side? Bad side. Okay. So we're putting glue around the edge of the bottom side of the frame. And... Ooh. That was not good. Okay, so putting glue on the back side of the frame so that we can attach the backer board to it. Going to use glue and brad nails just like we did with the frame. So we have attached the back and now we are cl uh, cleaning any glue that might have uh, spilled over in the inside. And then she's going to take a fine grit sander and uh, sand it down a little bit to make it a little more smooth and then going to uh, stain with a dark stain to match the table that she plans to use it on and also to provide a very nice contrast against the light colored books. And that can also use, we're going to use it as a trivet, but can also be used as decoration on a wall. Can yeah. be, be used as art, it doesn't have to be trivet. Okay. okay. As we're getting ready to sand, we put down uh, what is normally used for the kitchen uh, drawers or lining shelves, and that prevents the piece from moving as we sand it.
make sure that the dust is gone and then you can start staining it. Okay, you can put that if you on the other side of the show. So we're wiping the dust from the sander off here um, so it doesn't interfere with the stain um, when it's applied. I would also what? like to either I need to sand this or we need to put little foot pads on it. Okay. We can put foot pads. Foot pads are good. At good. It'll also help protect your table with the foot pads in lieu of... Right. So that's something that you want to think about if you're building this project is uh, putting some foot pads underneath it. Um, it stain. Right. Okay. So okay. we have placed the frame that has been sanded onto our little feet to make sure that it stays up from the workbench. Uh, now we're mixing up the stain and again try to mix easy so you don't put bubbles into your stain. And this is kind of an espresso finish, a darker stain that will match the table. Ready when you are. Okay. So she has laid the corks out and into the orientation she likes with the patterning that she likes. So now we're going to use some glue. I'm going to put the glue here. And then I'm going to pick one up at a time and put some glue there. You don't need glue on both surfaces. Who are you and what have you done with the woodworker? I am the woodworker. You don't need glue on both surfaces. You always tell me. You would do afford you the time to slide and move the pieces if you're not happy with the placement. Whereas you were to use um, hot glue, it is almost an instantaneous bone. So it's not very forgiving.
So we had plenty of corks so we decided to cut one more cork in four small pieces and use them as the feet for our uh, trevis, 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 trivet. Trivet. trivet, the bottom of the trivet. And that gives it even more character and of course the cork will not allow any heat to penetrate. Not that this wood would but um, we decided to do that instead of putting plastic feet. So that's another little well, uh, creative way. And what? the cork is soft so it won't right. mar the table at all. Okay. okay. <coughs> Using hot glue to attach the cork feet to the bottom it's of done. the trivet. <coughs> This concludes our episode for today and as you can see we ended up with a very nice trivet or conversely again you can hang it on a wall as a piece of art. There are very many options that you can exercise in how to use this. This is also an example of how to use material that you use in your daily life. For example we enjoy a glass of wine every now and then or slightly more often and uh, we end up with a lot of corks and this is a wonderful way to use the corks that we have in a very creative way and end up with a very useful project as you can see this is a project that you can easily complete in an afternoon including the staining and we are overall what you guys think very pleased with the outcome mm -hmm. oh, you need to talk. I like it, it looks yeah. good Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. So if you enjoyed this this video, please smash the like button. If you didn't, the other button works as well. If you like the work we do in this channel, please like, share and subscribe and help us grow the channel. And also comment and be part of the community. Join us every Wednesday and Sunday, Wednesdays for ticks and trips, and Sundays for builds, and uh, I hope I will see you around. Thank you for the support of the channel. I will see you soon.